Hey everybody, long time no see. Um, I finally came back uh, home from a long journey and I was checking the GL3 package. So GL3 supports the latest uh, uh, features of OpenGL, which is basically the core profile. It's called the core profile. And before, before the GL3, OpenGL uh, on Max was uh, quite an old version and uh, this meant that it was not using all the full potential of the newest graphic cards but now it should go actually in that direction um, okay so let's actually go inside the example let's make a quick uh, panoramic uh, of the examples that come with the new GL3 package so to install the GL3 package you see you have a little instruction box here so uh, I already did it, so let's go in the examples. Okay, cool. The first one, Mesh Instance, uh, you can see as soon as I open it, it shows us this cool stuff going on in the window. Uh, it's extremely cool. It's like a particle system, but instead of using points, it uses actual meshes. Uh, actual spheres, which is kind of crazy. Try to do that with 10,000 spheres uh, in GL2 and then um, let's talk again so this is a massive improvement and uh, let's see how this is done this is done by something called GPU instancing which is something new of GL3 okay it works by using the GGL buffer and the GGL mesh now the GGL buffer is a new object that basically stores vertex information on the GPU so instead of going, instead of using like a matrix that goes basically back and forth between the CPU and the GPU, the GGL buffer uh, stores the stuff once and then is inside the GPU. In this case, it's not used exactly like that because it's it's actually receiving a, a matrix. Uh, actually, every five uh, seconds is receiving a matrix that updates the the force field uh, of the GTMO field. And that sends it into GGL buffer. And basically, this buffer here is read inside the shader, so this shader here, and it's used to determine the position of the of the mesh. But why there are so many meshes? Um, it's basically like GGL multiple, but instead of using GGL multiple, you can just connect the buffer to the GGL mesh give to it the instanced one attribute and it will basically use every um, cell of the matrix as a position for the uh, one instance of the mesh. Now it uses it as a position um, because it's said into this shader, so the shader is applied to the mesh, into the shader is said to use uh, the uh, buffer as a position. So if we take a look here at the parameters in the shader we can see that position is uh, the first parameter and it's taken from the state position which basically means the grid shape shape that comes inside uh, um, that comes inside the shader at uh, at startup because it's automatic zero so it just comes inside the, once inside the ggl mesh mesh gets read from the shader uh, as position and then gets used later in the shader then there is instance position which basically means uh, uh, this is the frame buffer, uh, sorry, the, the buffer. And why do I know that this is the buffer? Because it's called state vertex utter. Now this buffer is called here type vertex utter without any index. So it means if you only use one single buffer, you don't need to get an index. If you use more buffers, then you can, uh, then you can set them uh, using an index. But in this case, we just say vertex utter. And this we know, this is the in instance position. Then uh, there is something like the model view projection matrix, uh, uh, which is a mat4, as you can see, and this is also gets uh, passed on the shaders from max, and this we know because it's written state, which means it's not passed from you, it's not like a uniform, uh, it comes from the state. So it's a uniform, but it comes from the, the, the application and not from a param message that you send. And the, this is the model view projection matrix. Now, in the older way of writing shaders, uh, you didn't have to pass this stuff inside the shader because it was already accessible through stuff like GL, model, view, uh, project, matrix, and so on. But this doesn't exist anymore in OpenGL version 1.5, so you had to pass it manually. 
Okay, so this is already a difference. The same for the model view matrix. Uh, the normal is the same, and then there is uh, some other stuff that you have to pass ma ma manually, like the material, uh, the color, and so on. The colorize is actually a real parameter that we pass as a param. Uh, blah blah blah. Okay, so let's take a look at the shader. Basically, just defines several ways of uh, calculating the light. This, you can see that the, the, the spheres here have actually a light, are actually lightened up, uh, which is uh, calculated inside the shader. So you cannot attach a GGL material to do that, because now we're using a shader. So you have to calculate yourself manually how to, um, how to calculate the light for every single vertex. Now, the light calculation on this vertex is... Uh, uh, it's done for every type of light, as you can see, uh, there is spot light, point light, and directional light. And then, uh, what happens in the shader is that, so, th this, these are functions that are uh, defined before the main function. In the main function, we get the, the GL position. So, a GTL pos our GL position is how we tell um, GLSL to update the position of the vertex. So, this is basically our output position for the vertex. And this is calculated by multiplying the model view projection matrix by the position plus the instance position, so basically plus the uh, force field. And then one, this is for the perspective divide, the division, which uh, we don't care, we just set it to one. And then we calculate the light using the model view matrix and so on. We pass it inside, uh, calculate the normals, and uh, there is a little color calculation. And then we calculate the light by passing it inside the um, light uh, function. Uh, for example, here I calculated with point light. We could also use directional light. So one of the functions that are defined here on top. Directional light looks actually even cooler. Um, blah, blah, blah. This light is actually, is actually an array of lights because we could have multiple lights. And then we should calculate the lights for every single one of those lights. Uh, for example, there is actually the number of lights, so define num lights, we can say also two, and then we can actually choose to uh, use another light. So we will we'll go there and say light number one, which doesn't exist. So but if, we'll, uh, if I would create one, so ggl light, and say type point, no, it's actually type directional, then uh, this I have to create another one exactly. Then it works. So let's see if I say um, diffuse red. Yeah. Okay. Then it will actually work. And then if I will go here and say light zero, this would be actually the color of the other light. So let's actually make this blue. Just to just to check that everything is working properly. Uh, now this became uh, light zero and this became a light one. Depends on the order in which you create the light. So if you create this first, then it's going to be light zero. And if you create this first, this is going to be light zero and the other light one. And so on, depending on the order in which you create them. Okay, so yeah that's uh, that's that's it then inside the actually the fragment shader we just uh, set the the color and um, as you can see there is a bit different syntax with this in and out this you can read in the documentation is pretty pretty straightforward basically instead of sending varying variables between the shaders between the vertex the geometry and the fragment shader you had to create a struct and then send the uh, send the data inside from inside this struct so for example I have a struct that comes inside and is called JIT per vertex, which is actually outputted from the vertex shader. So out JIT per vertex and the struct is called JIT out. And then here you can say in JIT per vertex, JIT in. And that's basically the name for which I can use it inside the shader. So JIT in contains color. So color. And it's cool. The only thing about the shader is that the light calculation is done per vertex. I suppose this is done to spare a bit of processing power, but you could actually uh, do it also in the fragment shader and it will look a bit better. Uh, let's actually save the shader. Uh, let's actually not save the patch. Okay, this was mesh instance. Multiple instance is really simple. It's just how you would use a normal uh, GGL multiple. 
but uh, it works on a GPU, so it's much faster. It's just much faster and uh, but it's crazy, it's crazy faster. And I mean, look at how many Tauruses are we rendering. Basically, we are rendering uh, 150 uh, multiplied by 150, which makes uh, 10,000 something. Can maybe try to get a million of them, uh, which still works. I mean, it still works with a million of shapes. So it's kind of crazy. Okay, so ciao. Uh, let's go on with the 3D texture. Uh, this could be a bit buggy for somebody. Um, my camera is actually already being used uh, uh, by the recording application. But okay, this will do a very cool uh, scan slit uh, effect. The only problem that I encountered is that here, the, this number here was 512, which was uh, somehow too much, and it was giving me an error here, like GL frame buffer not found, or something like that. And uh, to solve this error, uh, Rob Ramirez answer about this on the forum, you just have to reduce the size of the of the third dimension of the texture. So before it was 512, I put it down to 64. Okay, uh, so this is uh, this is pretty straightforward. It basically allows the texture to be three-dimensional, which is super cool. Then you can basically slice through them, uh, through the, the third dimension of the texture using the slice attribute. Uh, this can be useful for uh, a, a lot of stuff. And uh, for example, uh, slit scanning. Uh, this is the same but using videos, so let's actually take a look uh, at it. Um, the cool thing about this thing is not actually the same, it uses a texture, uh, instead of simply selecting the textures that it recorded pro uh, pro progressively, it actually uses a noise to uh, select which texture is going to play, and it makes it extremely, extremely cool. The only problem is that for me is uh, is really slow, I don't know what is my problem here, but apparently it's extremely slow. But it's very cool, you can see how it works inside the shader. Basically we have the texture, we sample the texture, and then we select the, the texture 3D, so the, the video texture, by uh, getting it uh, using, uh, uh, let me see... Yeah, basically the map value, which is uh, the noise texture, plus the offset, and uh, modulo 1, so it always goes between 0 and 1. Because this is apparently normalized uh, texture coordinates. TC stands for texture coordinates, as you can say. This doesn't even use the new GLSL, um, the new GLSL um, actually syntax, it's still version 1.0. Instead of going on with cube map, let's actually take a look at something like the transform feedback, which is uh, is uh, the second object basically that is added in uh, OpenGL3, and it does something extremely uh, extremely interesting. It basically it's an object that must be connected to GGL mesh, and it takes as input GGL buffers. So, the same buffer that we saw before, but this time, instead of using it in his instancing mode, we use it uh, as, uh, basically, uh, a feedback system for vertex data. So, it means, let's say that I calculate the, the vertex position of all these little particles. Okay, so we have the vertex position of all the particles on this torus, or, for example, let's take the duck. Then, um, I click enable here on the, on the thing, the GGLTF, which is transform feedback, and it uses the data from the position and the velocity to continuously update uh, a shader, which is here, which basically just sums position plus velocity per speed. And it uh, adds the previous position to the velocity of the frame uh, before, and then it uses the, the new position and the new velocity to calculate uh, uh, the current one. So it's a feedback of uh, uh, vertex data. Um, it's a feedback of vertex data. And uh, the GGL buffer gets updated automatically, so you don't have to, to, uh, to bang it, it just gets updated every frame, and it sends the data from the previous position inside the current position. 
okay? And uh, in order to read these buffers inside the shader, um, you can do like that. So every buffer has the same name as uh, one of the buffers for the GGL mesh. For example, position and normal. It doesn't matter actually that this is called position, this is called normal, because it just, uh, it just depends what you feed them inside those shaders. So in the beginning you feed them, uh, sorry, inside those buffers. In the beginning you feed them with a matrix, and then basically if you don't update that matrix they are just going to be uh, they are just going to be updated using the previous uh, content okay for example if i update the noise it will give a, another velocity and then it will basically uh, do a bit uh, no, uh, still a bit of movement and then it will stop because there is a drag thing which means that the velocity gets multiplied every time for a number smaller than 1, exactly 0 0.99, which will bring the particles to a halt. Oh yeah, I wanted to say, and then you read that inside the shader, like that. So basically, we uh, name this position, we say type, okay, it's a vectory, and then we access the state position, um, which doesn't matter that this is called position 1, uh, we are referring actually to the type of the buffer, which is position. And then the velocity has type normal, so we access it through state normal, okay? And then we give it an out name, which is velocity 1, could have been everything, but just to remember that this is actually velocity, we call it velocity. And then we have actually to fill um, this variable called velocity 1 with the new velocity um, value that we calculate inside the shader okay and uh, this we also have to declare as input because this is the new syntax of the gl uh, glsl uh, 1.5 and uh, yeah we have to call them uh, as input both for the position and the velocity because this is actually something that gets updated every frame uh, through the buffers and then we also have to uh, define outputs which um, must have the same name of the buffers so nothing crazy, uh, this is, uh, uh, but this is extremely useful, for example, to make particle systems completely on the GPU. I think this is going to be the content of the next video that we are going to do. So yeah, we will see better how all this stuff works. Um, you can check the other examples, they get a bit more, uh, a bit more complex. Nothing too complex, but they are going to involve geometry shaders. Uh, which adds another layer of complexity and then they are mixing uh, uh, shaders attached to the GGL mesh with shaders attached to the GGL transfer feedback. So things are going to, uh, things get a bit uh, complex, but uh, just try to take it down a little piece per time and you will, and you will appreciate the, uh, the, the cool improvements that have been done with GL3. So I'm super happy about this uh, update. I cannot wait to use the new uh, functionalities and uh, to make some videos about them so we can all all enjoy them and talk about them. So cool, I will see you in the next video and if you're a patron of mine don't forget to join my Discord channel um, so we can chat about this stuff and uh, everything Max related. Okay, so uh, see you soon, have fun with the new GL3 package and ciao. Thank you.